Income Tax 2022-2023. Create a tax formula worksheet using Excel part number two. Let's do some wealth preservation with some tax preparation. So we are in our example form 1040. We've started to populate it using LACERT tax. Tax base is tax base. Software, you don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to tax software, it's a great tool to run different scenarios with. You can also get access to the form 1040 related forms and schedules, IRS website. Website renewal dependence.com. IRS.gov, IRS.gov. So we have here our outline of just a single filer no dependents and we have our basic information down below and have been using that to construct an income tax formula in our excel worksheet as a way to kind of double check the data input as we input the information into the tax software support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Software as a way for us to basically visualize the tax formula in a more simplified way. So last time we basically did the outline of the income tax formula. Note that when using tax software, oftentimes they'll have a similar outline down here. This is where it's located in LACERT, where they're just basically getting it down to the bare bones, basically an income tax formula. We are reconstructing it in Excel because that allows you to kind of see all the stuff that's feeding into the tax formula, allows you to kind of construct your own kind of tax calculation in a way similar to how the income tax forms are actually calculating it, allowing you to get a better understanding of what is going on, what is included in each of these line items of the income tax formula, and it gives you that double check when doing returns in practice to basically redo the data input in an Excel format so you could double check uh, if you had any kind of data input errors. Error. Error or any errors related to a tax calculation that the tax software did something funny because of the way you put the data input in it so that you can kind of double check that as we go. So uh, last time we, we got to basically the outline here, which is gonna be income, and then we've got the adjustment. So if I mirror that to what's on the tax return, you've got the income, all of this stuff up top, uh, I'm gonna put on a different form or a different schedule on our worksheet. Therefore, we get down to, in essence, just the taxable income down below. And then we have the adjustments to income. We don't have any here. We'll put some more adjustments later uh, in it so we can have another schedule for this line item instead of just putting a zero there. We got the adjustments to income, which ties out to the, to the uh, adjusted gross income here. Then you've got the itemized or standard deductions, which we're pulling from our table, which is outlined on the left. Uh, or the itemized deductions would be Schedule A, which we'll take a look at later. We're gonna pull the larger of these two items. And then let's put an underline here. I'm gonna go to the Home tab and let's put a little underline there. That'll give us to our, well, actually, no, let's, let's undo that. That'll get us to our uh, qualified business income. This is that one line item that they kind of threw in there as kind of a plug when they adjusted the tax returns a, a, a little while ago, a few years ago, I mean. <laughs> and that's gonna have to do with Schedule C income oftentimes or self-employment income. We'll talk about that later. Let's put an underline under this one, Home tab, Font Group, Underline. That gets us to our taxable income, which is gonna be our adjusted gross income minus these two items. We have a formula to calculate that. We're not gonna calculate the actual rate because it's using tables. So if we reconstruct it in our uh, Excel worksheet, we can then use the software to calculate the actual tax, which comes out to 14,774 in this example. And, and then we can use back into the rate, which will give us the average rate.
I'm gonna put an underline here, home tab, font group, underline. And then we've got other credits. So the credits down below, other taxes, and that will then give us uh, to our total tax. Collecting taxes. And then we've got the payments and refundable credits. Let's put an underline here, and that'll give us to the amount due or refund. So let's go ahead and just, what I'm gonna do now is, is try to format this so we can make it look a little bit nicer, clean it up a bit. So up top, I'm gonna put a header on it. So I wanna put something up above line number one. So I need to add a row. So to do that, I can select the entire row one by putting my cursor on the number one, selecting it, right click in the selected area and insert. It will always insert an entire row if you are inserting an entire row above. So there we have it. I'm just gonna call this the uh, tax uh, formula for 2022. So I'm gonna call it that, and then I wanna center it across the formula. Now I could do that by going to the home tab, alignment and merge. That's what probably comes to most people's minds, but I don't really like that because then you've got this big merged cell which kind of messes stuff up. So I'm gonna undo that and I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to uh, the format, formatting of the cells. And then I will go to the alignment. And then in the horizontal, I wanna make it center across the selection. So there we have it and I'll say save. So now, even though it's in cell A1, I still have these other cells that haven't been merged. So it's a little confusing to see where that cell is coming from, but it's not like grouping all the cells together. Then I'll make it look like a header. I usually do that by selecting the entire uh, area of the header, going up top, home tab, I'm gonna go to the fonts, I'm gonna make the color black and then white. That's what I typically do to the headers to make it stand out a bit. So then I'm gonna make this whole thing uh, brackets. Let's put some borders around it to make it stand out a bit. So I'm gonna put my cursor on A2 and select on down here to uh, 16. And I'm gonna go to the home tab, font group, put brackets around the whole thing. So that should make it stand out a bit more. Maybe column C, I can make that a little thinner. So I could put my cursor between C and D and make it a little thinner because that 12 is possibly like the largest number that's gonna happen there. And so that's that should work. And then so I'm gonna say, okay, this one, column A, the signs, I might wanna center those. So I'm gonna go to the home tab, alignment, center those. And now I centered this one again. Let's undo that. Undo that. Okay, hold on. Now I messed up. I messed up this whole thing. This thing right here, I don't want to center it. I want to left align it. And then I'm going to reformat it. Format, right click, format, alignment, center across. Boom. Okay. So then, so there we have that. Then this one, maybe I can make this a little smaller just to fit the signs. All I need is for it to be as big enough to fit those signs. So that looks like it's big enough. All right. So then I might color code this thing, which might make it a little bit easier to, to look at. So the basic color coding I'm gonna use is, I'm gonna enter something as blue if it's gonna be pulled from some if I'm gonna do the data input into the system here. So for example, uh, the income line, I'm not gonna put anything directly into the cell. It's gonna be pulled from this second tab, the income tab. And that's where we had this blue area. I'm gonna delete these two rows up above, putting my cursor on row one and two, right click and delete. So it starts at, you know, A1. I'm gonna select the whole thing, also make it bold. So we'll make it a little bold. All right, so if I, if I continue down the adjustments to income, later on, this is gonna come from another place as well, another tab, and then this is a formula, so I'm not gonna do any data input into this cell. This down here, itemized deductions, is gonna come from another tab, so I'm not gonna make it blue. Standard deductions uh, is gonna come from this table down below. So that's kind of something that I'm, I might consider a data input tab. I'm not gonna actually manually, I'm gonna say it's equal in the table below, but I'm gonna make that blue. Let's go up top. I'm gonna make it this color blue to say that I have to do something to it or at least look at it. 
If you don't have that, it's in the more colors, standard color, it's right there. That's the one that the Excel is fun guy used. So I started using that. It's a good color, I like it. So we'll use that one. And then this one is gonna be the greater uh, of these two. So we'll get back to that in a second. Other qualified uh, deductions. This one, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make blue as well because if there's a schedule C, I might put that directly in here or I might make another worksheet for it. We'll talk about that basically later. And that gets a taxable income. This is a formula, so I'm not gonna do any actual data input here. This is actually a formula, so I'm not gonna do any data input here. This cell, however, is one where I'm gonna do the data input because I'm gonna pull this cell in, letting the software do the calculation. So I'm gonna make that blue to indicate that I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually do the data input there. This one is actually gonna come from another tab. So it's not yet, but I will do that later. This one's gonna come from another tab, so we'll do that later. And then the total tax is a formula, so I'm not gonna do any data input here. And then the payments and other credits are also gonna come from other tabs. So I'm not gonna make that, I'm not gonna do any data input there. And the total is a formula. So I'm not gonna do any data input there. So you can see most of this whole uh, formula is gonna be drawn from data input that are on other sheets that we'll be constructing in future presentations. Now let's just try to make the format uh, of the cells look a little different. I'll make the, like the income, let's make it green. So the income is green versus the deductions I'll make red. So I'm gonna to go to the home tab and I'm gonna to go to the font group and let's make this green. I use, let's use which this darker green and let's do that. Now notice that the first half of this formula is an income statement. When we think about an income statement, usually income is good, deductions are bad. It's kind of the reserve, reverse with taxes. I don't want, I'd like to have income that I don't have to include as taxable income. That would be better. But I'm still gonna kind of reflect it in the formula as income is good, the positive numbers, and the deductions are gonna be the, the, the red, the negative numbers. So I'm gonna say, which are basically expenses, right? So I'm gonna take these, these are basically expenses. I'll make them red. So I'll go to the tab up top and I'll make them red. And that's gonna be equal. Usually this will still be a positive number. So I'm gonna make that green. And then, so that's a subtotal of our income on the way down. And then all of this stuff, the greater of the itemized or standard deductions are deductions. So I'll make those red. Those are gonna be the decreases as we get down to the taxable income. This is another deduction. So I'm gonna make that red, a decrease as we get down to the taxable income, which is like net income. And if our income was greater than the deductions, this line will typically still be positive, I'm going to make it green to indicate positiveness uh, here. So then uh, down below, we've got the tax, the tax rate, which is kind of, it is what it is. It's going to be the, the rate. So I won't make that any other color. Now the bottom of the formula then is a little bit funny because now we've got the actual tax that is being calculated. So then the question, you know, the, <laughs> the tax is actually kind of bad and the credits would be kind of good down here now that we're at the bottom after we've gotten to the to the taxable income. So I'm going to try to reflect it that way, right? So I'm going to say, okay, this is this is the tax. So the actual tax is bad. That's how much we would owe if we owed money. So I'm going to make that red. I'm going to say, okay, that's red. And then the other credits, credits are good on the bottom half. So I'm going to make that green because if I got a credit that would lower the amount of taxes. And so notice I'm using the terms good and bad down here, whereas up top, good and bad is kind of reversed. Up top, I used income minus expenses in essence. Down here, I'm using taxes bad, <laughs> you know, credits good kind of thing. Okay, so then, then here I'm gonna say other taxes, more taxes are bad. That would increase how much we're gonna owe. So I'll make that red. And that's going to give us our total tax. So if we still owe tax, that's still bad, right? So I'm going to say that's red. And then we're going to compare that to the payments that we made and other credits, refundable credits. Those are both good. Not that we had to make the payments, but the fact that we already made them means it's going to lower how much we owe at this point in time. So I'm going to make that uh, green and then that will get us down to the tax uh, due or refund amount down below. 
Now the tax due or refund will be good or bad depending, you know, if it's if it's the amount that's due, if it's a tax due, that amount is going to be bad, right? And if it's a refund, it's going to be good, right? That would be a good thing. So uh, and if it's if it's tax due, it's actually going to be a positive number. The refund is going to be a negative number. So I'll actually represent that with uh, brackets. So let's represent that with brackets. And then I could do a formula. Let's make this bracket green. And then I could do a formula down here so that it will show conditional formatting so that if it's a positive number, it's actually going to represent as red, which means it's going to be amount that you owe. Right. And if it's a negative number, it's actually going to be green. That's going to be the amount that's going to be refunded to you. So let's do a conditional formatting, kind of a neat tool in Excel. You could do that by going to the home tab. So I'm on this cell, home tab, uh, conditional formatting, hitting the drop down. I'm going to say if this is greater than, if it's greater than a zero, if it's greater than zero, then we want it to be, if it's greater than zero, we want it at that red. So that's the default red. So that's what it is there. So that looks good. So I'm going to say, okay. So I'm just going to change this for now just to show you what it is. This is that formula. If I made this like, like negative two, then it's not red. If I make it five, it's red. Now let's, let's change it so that let's do it. So that now if it's negative, negative two, I want it to be green. So I'm going to go, okay, let's go to the home tab, conditional formatting and say, if this is less than order less than a thousand now uh zero if it's less than zero i want it to be green green with dark green so it looks like that so i'm gonna say okay so now if it was positive six red if it's negative one green if it's zero which is unlikely then no conditional formatting is being applied so if i say this is equal to this minus this there it is it's red it's a positive number in this case because the tax calculation was positive, right? So the positive number is kind of bad, right? Because we would be comparing the taxes to how much we paid. If it flips to negative, that would mean we'd get a refund and that would be good. So that's the general outline there. Let's also do another kind of formula on this one. So you can you could say this equals I think we could just use a simple max formula, max of these two. I want to take the higher of these two. In other words, max of those two. So if this happened to be, if the itemized deductions were 13,000, it would take 13,000. You can also use an if formula, a logic formula, but that max formula obviously is the most uh, easy one to use. So let's stick with that one. So that's what that looks pretty good for now. So in a future presentation, maybe we'll go into a little bit more detail and break out at least the bare bones of these other items that we'll be possibly making more tabs for. And we'll, we'll keep building out these other tabs, like this other tab only has W-2 in income in it right now. Uh, but obviously everything that's on this page one could be part of that, of that other tab. All this stuff, all these other kinds of income over here could be part of that other tab and so we'll add to it as we start to do our our taxes going forward we'll, we'll construct and build our excel worksheet as we're adding detail as you might do in practice if you were using kind of this technique to double check your numbers you could just you, you can you can add as necessary to these uh, subordinate tabs to add more subordinate calculations and whatnot that will feed into the formula and we'll, we'll see how that goes as we uh, enter data.